It's never ceased to amaze people how such a powerful voice could possibly come out of someone who's only four feet, nine inches tall. Stephanie Mills' undeniable talent took her from the recording studio to Broadway and back. Along the way though, she'd experience many highs and many lows in both her professional and personal life that would test her resilience, but ultimately make her better and stronger in the end. Singer, songwriter, and actress, Stephanie Dorothea Mills, was born and raised in the Bedford-Stuyvesant neighborhood of Brooklyn, New York. She grew up singing in her local Baptist church, and by the age of nine, she'd make her professional debut in the Broadway musical, Maggie Flynn. She did quite a bit of television work too, including The Electric Company and Captain Kangaroo. After winning Amateur Night at the Apollo Theater six weeks straight at 11 years old, Stephanie went on to perform with many superstars, such as the Isley Brothers, Roberta Flack, and James Brown. In 1973, Stephanie signed Paramount Records and released her first single, I Knew It Was Love, off her debut album, Moving in the Right Direction. She then decided to make what she thought was a move in the right direction to another label, Motown to be exact. There, she released her follow-up effort for the first time. Unfortunately, neither album produced any hits. Then, Stephanie's career would take off in a major way, courtesy of Broadway. She landed the role of Dorothy in the musical The Wiz, an African-American adaptation of The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, after the producer of the production heard her debut song and asked her to audition. It was meant to be, since due to all the rejection she'd already encountered on other auditions, Stephanie didn't want to try out, and only did so at the insistence of her mother. The song Home from the show would become her signature tune, and would be covered later by Diana Ross for the movie adaptation three years later. Many people were curious as to why Stephanie didn't play her Broadway role on the big screen, but in subsequent interviews, she explained that things just didn't work out for her to be able to do the job. Also, Diana was the bigger star. And for whatever reason, many Broadway performers don't end up playing their role in the movie versions of productions. Stephanie wasn't too disappointed over it though, since she was so young and had her whole life ahead of her to accomplish her career goals. She would finally experience commercial success in the music industry in 1979 when she signed to the 20th Century Fox Records label. There, she garnered a lot of attention for the tracks, Put Your Body In It, You Can Get Over, and What You Gonna Do With My Lovin', which was also the name of her third album. She quickly followed up with 1980's Sweet Sensation, which featured the top 10 hit, Never Knew Love Like This Before. The song would also garner Stephanie a Grammy Award for Best Female R&B Vocal Performance. Also at this time, Stephanie married and made the move from New York to Los Angeles to be with her husband, Jeffrey Daniel, from the R&B group Shalimar. They would divorce three years later. Over the next five years, Stephanie released five albums and scored further hits, including the Teddy Pendergrass duet, Two Hearts, the Prince cover of How Come You Don't Call Me Anymore, and The Medicine Song. She then returned to theater to star in the first of a string of short-lived revivals of The Wiz. Stephanie finally captured her first number one R&B hit in 1986 with I Have Learned to Respect the Power of Love off her self-titled 10th album. More number one R&B hits followed with I Feel Good All Over and You're Putting a Rush on Me from her 1987 album If I Were Your Woman, as well as Something in the Way You Make Me Feel and the title track from her 1989 album Home, originally featured in The Wiz back in 1975. Stephanie then entered into another short-lived marriage to longtime friend Dino Meminger. She went on to release a couple more albums in the 90s that didn't produce any major hits before being released from her contract with MCA in 1992. Stephanie's third marriage also took place around this time. Unfortunately, third time wouldn't be the charm, as they would eventually divorce. Years later, she'd say that she doesn't think she's good at marriage, in part due to her bouts with depression, which she's suffered from for a long time. She released her first gospel album in 1994 titled Personal Inspirations. The album peaked at number eight on the Billboard Gospel chart and featured tracks written by Marvin Winans, James Cleveland, and Angela Winbush. In 2001, Stephanie gave birth to her only child, a son. There's only been speculation over the years as to who his father is, 
since Stephanie has preferred not to comment about it. What she has said is that the birth of her son, who has Down syndrome, was the best thing to happen to her. After a 10-year hiatus, she came back with Born For This in 2004. It features rearranged productions of past hits as well as some new tracks. Throughout her career, Stephanie has proven to be a very outspoken and uncensored person, no matter how other people felt about what she had to say. In 2017, Stephanie held nothing back during an interview on Sister Circle, when she was asked about the state of music in the current climate. She spoke candidly about the whitewashing of R&B that she believes is obvious when comparing how much more attention soulful projects from white artists get versus black artists. She also added a warning to black artists about needing to come to the realization that their relationships with certain people are really about the bottom line and not genuine friendship. And then these black people out here that are these stars need to know that when you're invited to people's homes, you're just entertainment. Why you're just entertainment there? because you have that hit record at that time. You have that hit movie at that time. Mm. And don't not have a hit record you're or never, a hit movie. You're then you never, won't hear from them. You're mm. never their friends. Let's wow. be clear. Mm. Stephanie made headlines in August 2018 with her response to singer Sam Smith, who was seen in a video posted to social media saying, quote, I don't like Michael Jackson, but this is a good song, in reference to the King of Pop's 1983 hit, Human Nature. Miss Mills went all the way off on the British singer-songwriter saying, don't come for Michael Jackson when you wish you have sold as many records and you wish you were the king of pop like he was. I'm so tired of you people studying our music and studying our artists and claiming that you don't like our music. Go sit your one hit wonder ass down and learn how to finish a tour. When you can sell as many records as the king of pop, Michael Jackson, then maybe you can say something. During a stop at New York's Power 105.1 radio station morning show The Breakfast Club in November 2019, Stephanie touched on her past relationships with men and how she ended up playing the role of Sugar Mama. She bought two different men luxury cars, and when asked what was the nicest thing a man had ever gifted her, you could hear a pin drop in the studio from the deafening silence. She admitted that no man she'd ever been involved with showered her with presents, including Michael Jackson, who she dated during the late 70s. Stephanie does, however, look back on that time with Michael specifically, with nothing but fond memories. And a couple of years later, she even mentioned on an Instagram post that she wishes they had married so she could have protected him. Fox Souls, the Tammy Mac Late Show, invited Stephanie on in early 2020, and she revealed that at the start of her career, MTV and VH1 never wanted to play her music videos due to her being, quote, too black. When the hoes seemed confused as to why Stephanie didn't think things were a lot better now for black artists than decades ago, Stephanie summed up her feelings simply by stating that even though it looks like many people are being celebrated, for the most part, they are really only being tolerated. Since her relationship with her son is so special to her, it was no surprise that the next project on Stephanie's docket would be related to catering to his needs. She formed the 444 Love Foundation, headquartered in Charlotte, North Carolina. It's a nonprofit that advocates and invests in caring for, educating, and developing programs for individuals with special needs. In the summer of 2021, Stephanie surprised everyone with the release of her first new single in nearly a decade called Let's Do the Right Thing. The reason it had been so long is because she'd already decided not to go back into the studio again due to her love and preference for live performance. She summed up the significance behind the song in a video posted on her Instagram. The message is for us as black people to come together and do the right thing for us, not to look for others to help us or give us a helping hand. We need to help ourselves. She also made a point of releasing the song on Juneteenth, a day celebrating the end of slavery in the United States. Stephanie's also written several more tracks that she plans to release on other significant American dates. On November 18th, after Stephanie said that the powers that be weren't interested, her and Shaka Khan did come together to participate in a versus battle to celebrate their respective careers and sisterhood. At 65, Stephanie shows no signs of slowing down and currently continues to perform and tour nationwide 
in front of sold out audiences, spreading love and empowering people to be their best. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and comment. Also, don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you won't miss any future videos. See you next time.